Welcome to the API Kitchen, the most engaging and educational YouTube series on API security. My name is Confidence Stavely. I generally describe myself as the relatable cybersecurity leader because I'm able to communicate cybersecurity best practices in the most relatable way to audiences of all types. I'm also very passionate about building talent, and a lot of my work has to do with upskilling talent across Africa to be able to take up cybersecurity roles within the continent and globally. I initially thought I was going to be a medical doctor. Nothing bad with being a medical doctor though, but I think it was a dream my parents had sold me for such a long time that I thought it was mine. I had finished my secondary school, which is like high school here in the States, and I was taking a gap year. My parents were concerned about me sitting at home, and so they said to me, go to this computer school. That's what we call it. Go to this computer school and learn about computers. I got to learn how to use basic applications and then I graduated from there to then learn about coding and how to create things and I felt alive I felt like I was doing something that I wanted to keep doing so I had to make this presentation to my parents that I wanted to have a career in tech instead of medicine that they wanted me to do there was no point of reference around us as to who had ventured into this place and made a living for themselves or had done great for themselves. So my parents had to trust me and the sparkle in my eyes, the joy they could feel. And I went on, got a scholarship and studied IT and business information systems at University of Middlesex. And it was during my master's when I was studying IT management that I took an elective course called cryptography. That was where actually I got my intro into cyber. Cyber Safe Foundation is a result of a bad experience. My mother was scammed by cyber criminals and lost her life savings. So I wanted to do something to make sure that less and less people experience what she experienced. And our first initiative was called No Go For Maga. It loosely translates in English as don't be a victim of cyber crime. So we wanted to use something that was very street wise. So someone on the streets that you know didn't have a very formal job would understand the messaging. We have a lot of other programs. We have the DigiGirls program, for example, that we're funded by the UK government to bundle intermediate digital skills with cybersecurity awareness as well. In that program, we've been able to upskill about 16,000 women across Nigeria. So that's a Nigeria only program. But for CyberGirls, that's our upskilling program that is centered on building cybersecurity talent and closing the gender gap. We've been able to upskill over a thousand young women and girls across 22 African countries. Another program that I find very exciting as well is Shine Your Eye. And for Shine your eye we target older citizens like my mother and give them information that they can relate to because they're in the crosshairs of cyber criminals every now and again i'm very excited particularly about the cyber girls program because it's really dear to my heart it's one program that i can say that guarantees that in the next 10 or 5 years i won't look across the room and and not find someone that looks like me in the places that matter in cyber I would generally say that we don't want as women to be given opportunities in cybersecurity because we're women. We want to be given opportunities because we're the best for the job. But how do we become the best for the job without the training and access to the skills to become the best for the job? So that's where CyberGirls comes in to then prepare women to defend the digital world. We have the support system that is built for women, recognizing all of the challenges that they would face before they get into the industry and while they are in the industry. Our selection process is very thorough to make sure that we are trying to get some of the best people who applied into the program. Last year, we received 20,000 applications from 45 African countries and we only had seats for 500. So it's, it's very, very competitive. I'd like to share one story that really is close to my heart and it's the story of Fela Oshideko. Fela was in our first cohort and she was very young, about 20 years at the time. That girl, came out of the program, she secured her first role one month after as a petition tester for a major cybersecurity consulting company in her country. She got about a 2,100% increase in her income. She found a vulnerability in a major platform and that vulnerability could cost the company millions of dollars and she was able to responsibly disclose that. So I'm very excited and there's so many stories like Fela's story across our network of 22 African countries that we are training girls to get cybersecurity skills and be the digital economy. The Linux party is a combination of technical and fun way of learning about the Linux operating system, especially as it has to do with information security or cybersecurity industry as a whole. The Cyber Girls cohort, which is 
generally seven months it runs from march to october each year happens fully virtually that's the way we're able to be in 22 countries without costing an arm and a leg and the full country's budget <laughs> so we then look at the countries where we have the biggest numbers in terms of fellows and then we bring them together in a physical event so that combination of fun and technical learning and to create bonds and also interface with the industry as well is a key reason why we set up the linux party in today's episode, we are going to unravel the secrets of JSON Web Tokens, simply called JWTs. JWTs are a popular... API Keychain is one of my babies that I'm very excited about. One of the things that connects every one of us is food. I don't know anyone who is living who doesn't eat food. You may not be able to cook it, but you eat food. So what I wanted to do was use food and analogies around food to really explain API security in a way that's actionable, in a way that helps people build secure systems. And so that's the whole idea behind API Kitchen. And it's been, it's received such a rousing welcome. I get a lot of emails talking about how this has helped as a developer do something better. When I watched this episode, I was able to make this change. And for me, that's everything. I generally like to close up with my personal mantra. It's actually a nursery rhyme. It's good, better, best. I will never rest until my good is better and my better best.